Crypto.com When there's work to be done around or in your home When there's money to be spent You don't want to go wrong Where people you can trust oh, Get advice from us What you don't know can hurt you Hiredone.com That's right, folks. What you don't know can hurt you. Welcome to the show. My name's Adam Helfman. This is Hire It Done. I'm 97 won the ticket. Saturday morning, great time to uh, get your home improvement list all together. And uh, if you're for tuning into the show for the first time, let me tell you a little bit about me. I'm a home improvement expert. Been uh, fixing up homes for over 30 years. And uh, I've probably remodeled, I don't know, 10,000 homes at least. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of houses. That's what I do. I, I uh, repair homes. I'm in the home improvement business. In fact, I'm a fourth generation contractor. But I took all that information so that I could share it with you, the listener, so that when it's time to hire a contractor, guess what, folks? You get to find one that won't rip you off. You see, your biggest fear as a homeowner is a contractor who isn't going to overcharge you. He's not going to scam you. That's your fear. So I'm here to lay your fears because I'm going to give you the questions to ask. We're going to find contractors for you. We have a great contractor today uh, lined up. His name is Noah Jenai from Easy Home Improvement. We're going to be talking about brick chimneys, brick porch repair, brick repair. Uh, what do you got to do? When do you know that you need to repair or replace your front porch? Things like that. But, of course, we've got all kinds of home improvement talk to, to chat with, with you. And, then, and we also want you to know we have the uh, companion website, hireitdone.com. And uh, that's where you go. You get all kinds of great content. Content like videos on how to uh, hire contractors, videos on how to get a roof that doesn't leak, brick paving, mosquito control, things like that. And to be honest, it's the best place in the internet to get good information, especially local. In fact, Hire It Done is the fastest growing home improvement brand in Metro Detroit, just so you know. Um, we're the number one home improvement show, and we're going to keep it that way because we want to continue to give you good advice. We want you to have hassle-free home improvement, and we want you to understand that not every contractor is great, not every contractor is bad. We want you to be in front of the good ones. So that's what we do, and that's how we're trying to help you. And it's a great weekend to do that stuff as well. Anyways, so if you're tuning in for the first time, I want to thank you because that's what we're going to be doing here on I Are It Done. Um, also, we want you to understand that there's a lot going on in the home improvement business. In fact, business is booming. Finding a good contractor is not going to be easy this year. And it's something that you should plan properly for and make sure that you don't just try and think, oh, I just need a guy right now. I'm working with someone right now who's building a deck, right? And it's amazing to me that it can't get it. Some people are so frugal that they can't make a common sense decision. They have a deck that's fallen apart. The right way to do it is to replace it, but they just can't stomach it to replace it. So what do they do? They look for the cheapest guy. They look for another guy. And I've been trying to help them find guys. And it's been a complete disaster. Because, listen, if you folks, if you're not willing to pay for any bit of quality, then you're not going to get it done. And it, it, it kind of it kind of irks me a little because I don't understand that. This guy's a doctor, right? You go to him. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to pay you $400 for your 15-minute visit. I, I got another guy who went to the Bahamian School of Doctors. I mean, come on. Folks, learn. Listen up. Good morning, Stacy. Anyways, 10... I'm going to go over... I'm going to give you some kitchen trends right now because this is really cool. So we're already talking about 2019, right? That's unbelievable. And, you, you know, the number one remodeling project right now is kitchens and baths. So appliances are huge. Kitchen trends are huge. I don't cook. Okay, I eat out every meal, but I love a good kitchen, right? I like to try of an Instant Pot. I like to, like, I, I thought those were cool. 
I bought a bunch of stuff, made a bunch of recipes, and now I'm done with it. But let me tell you the trends coming in next year for your appliances. And this is where you want to go with, like, Bill and Rod's appliances. We have Joe Legato. He's a really good guy. They're a local Michigan-owned appliance place. And uh, he's my go-to guy for appliances and barbecues, to be honest. And it's grilling month, too, so we're going to talk maybe a little grilling as well. But here's what's coming next year. So be on the lookout, folks. Ranges that do new cooking tricks. That's number one. What do you mean? Well, have you ever heard of sous vide? Right, right. And a Nova sous vide? Sous vide is where you cryo seal a steak in a bag and you boil it. That's basically what it is. But it comes through like it cooks. It looks raw when it's done cooking. But then you sear it. Oh, man. Anyways, um, they have sous vide cooking built into the ranges now. Electrolux has one. Gaganau has one. Um, LG. So you're going to see that all being built in, which is kind of cool. Here's one that I like. Dishwashers that are drying better. Okay? Think about that. Your, your current dishwasher works great. Does it get the spots and the rinses? Now, I have yet to meet a person who sticks the plates in the dishwasher without rinsing them first. I don't know who does it. I rinse them off like they're plant. You know, I don't even know if you need a dishwasher because I rinse it off, clean it. I'm not sure. Roberto, do you do you rinse off your uh, dishes before you put them in the dishwasher? In fact, I want to take a little quick poll. If people are listening. Text me nine seven one three six if you rinse the dishes before you put them in the dishwasher. Of course, so they because always- it never it never fully does what it's supposed to do ever. Like okay, so ketchup. Right? Let's just use ketchup on your plate. Everyone rinses it off before you dump it in the dishwasher. I would hope so because it's going to come back just the man, looking the same. But the dishwasher <laughs> guys say not to do that. They say put it right into the dishwasher. I don't get it. No. Never yeah. happened to me. Right. I, well, here, these new dishwashers have new, better drying uh, and better cleaning uh, sprayers. I usually just lick the plate clean, but... Mm. <laughs> There you go. Ranch dressing or ketchup? <laughs> it's all good. Do you know ranch is the new ketchup? Really? Yeah. We we had a barbecue here yesterday, and we bought sugar-free ketchup. You did? Yes. Did you, they send you back, or were you put in the ketchup hall of shame? <laughs> it, was, it was requested, so. I just got in a fight with Olga's about ketchup. <laughs> did I tell you the story? How? So I'm at Olga's, which is one of my favorite you know, go to places, right? It's all about the bread. And they don't use Heinz ketchup there. They use their red gold brand, which is, you know, good, but not Heinz. So for some reason, they gave me the bill and they have this app that you pay on. And there was some kind of like uh, survey. And I surveyed and I answered and I said, I don't like your ketchup. And. <laughs> You know, if you're not going to serve Heinz, you know, they give you the bottle that looks just like Heinz with their logo on it, but then you can just tell it's just not the same taste. Said you, you said you can't fool me. Right. So I, I, I basically slammed him on the ketchup. And then I got an email from the chef, the corporate chef. And he, in quotes, quotes, I'd like to talk to you and catch up with you on, oh on our process. <laughs> so he gave me a really long excuse and it was, it sounded legit. So you're but, probably preparing next week. You probably have a couple hour conversation with the guy. No, no, no. I responded to him. I said, "I love your answer, but I'm not buying it." You, well, you they use this make other their brand. Own, right? No, I mean, it's a brand play. called Red Gold. It's a, and they use. He says Michigan tomatoes, so I got to give him a high five on that part. Right. But you know what? Sugar free ketchup just reminded me that I don't want that. Anyways, dishwashers that dry better. I'm not that guy. So Sub Zero and Wolf just came out with. It's Cove dishwasher, right? It aspires to do everything. It's it says for a price. You know the dishwasher is probably two, three grand, probably five grand. Who knows? It's got three spray arms, forty three jets, right? And it ensures that all the food particles get washed away. But here's the best part. It has a heater. It has a heater in it, so it will definitely dry your uh, dishes. And then the best part, the the glasses are on an angle. That way, the water on the top of the glasses, when you put them in upside down or the cups, doesn't stay puddling. It rinses it off. I love that. What else is there? How about cooking on your countertop? Heat, in, induction cooking is huge, right? That's a big one. Uh, 
and there's all kinds of new stuff for 2019 coming in. We're going to get Joe Legato in here to talk about it because we absolutely have a ton of stuff that we want to talk about with that. So anyways, folks, uh, this hour, by the way, is brought to you by Mosquito One. And Mosquito One is the guy who comes out and gets rid of your mosquitoes. And by the way, if you, if you have mosquitoes in your yard, forget about everything else. This is the guy you got to call. They come once a month or every three weeks. Um, and you could just have them do one treatment if you want, but the, the, the way to do it is to get it all summer. You'd be surprised. There are none. It's over. No mosquitoes, folks. No. I love that anyways. So we're going to be talking to Noah Janai from Easy Home Improvement coming up next. So I want everyone tuning in. If you have lick problems, chimney problems, you're not even sure, when are you going to get a good contractor? Well, you better call now. I'm Adam Healthman, and you're listening. Hire It Done on 97. Won the ticket. HireItDone.com Welcome back, folks. This is Hire It Done. My name's Adam Healthman. That's right. Uh, you're listening to Hire It Done on 97. Won the ticket. In studio with me right now is Noah Janai from Easy Home Improvement. Welcome. Hey, Adam. How's it going? Welcome back, actually. Yeah. So you've been busy. Very. That's right. Yep. So finding good contractors is like the 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 real mystery this year. It seems to be. Well, there's a lot of good contractors. It's just finding ones that are ready to do the work. Yep. So um, first, tell everyone what you do at the Hired Done audience. Well, I'm from Easy Home Improvement. We specialize in masonry work, pretty much anything, uh, brick and mortar, chimneys, porches, tuck pointing, brick with the basement around the house. Um, yeah. And business is good? Business is very good. So one of the biggest things this year that all my contractors have the nucleus or the th the, the trend, let's say, mm -hmm. labor. Yeah. Now, you have a lot of, every year, you because you don't do work all year round. No. You have the same guys coming back year after year. I do. So you're, you know, you pay them well. They know what they're doing. They're yep. busy with you. They know they have solid straight work. Yep. Are you actively looking for more people? I'm always looking for, like, at least one more guy. But right? a skilled guy. Not somebody who just picks stuff up and puts stuff down. I can find tons of those guys. Right. <laughs> and his the Craigslist right. guys? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, if you're a skilled Mason, yep. you're interested. Yeah. So how if someone calls you this week and says, All right, my porch needs to get redone, what are we talking as far as coming out to just give them a price? Next couple of days. I so you're, you're still available. Out. Yeah. So, okay. And then. Um, well, it's not just me. It's a couple of us that. Oh, so you have guys who go out and give okay. estimates, yes. Yeah, so. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, next couple of days. So you're out in a few days. Yep. And then if they say, okay, perfect, I want you to start right away. Now okay. what's the answer? <laughs> no, not right away. In a perfect world, we're going to say three weeks. In a perfect world. Three, work, three weeks. Three weeks in a perfect world. Okay, but then do. you've got unperfect, which would make rain. Weather. Rain rather weather. Rain. How about when it was ninety six degrees? Did you guys not want to work in that we, weather? It doesn't matter if I don't want to, they don't want to. It's got to get done, so we're out there. See, well, the only the only trade that I would say in the hot weather sh gets a pass is the roofers. Yeah, because the roof is twenty to forty degrees hotter. It is than it is down on the ground, which brings chimneys. <laughs> but no, no, no. That's right. Okay, there you go. But <laughs> but. But we if you're working on a chimney and it's 96 degrees out, it's 120 up there. I mean, we had, what, five 90-plus degree days in the right. last couple of weeks? Right. That would put us five more days behind. Did you take those days off? No. You worked? Yep. So you did it? We moved a little slower, drank a lot more of liquids, but we got it done. Well, that is important to know because, listen, you only have a set amount of time yep. for doing brick repair yep. or brick work yep. in, the, in general. What is the actual season, assuming good weather? Again, in a perfect world, mid-March to early November. Okay, so, whoa, that's it. So then mid-November all the way wintertime, November, December, January, February, mid-March. Yeah, freezing temperatures. So what do you snow. do? Do you hibernate in the winter? Yeah, I get fat. That's <laughs> why I lay around, I eat, and I get fat. That's what it is, huh? Yeah. You don't want to work in the winter? You take you actually just relax or do you do any yeah. work? No, I don't do anything. You know, um I mean you can't lay brick in the winter or you sh you shouldn't. Should I say the freezing temperatures um what happens is the mortar freezes. 
before it actually sets. And then when it thaws and it tries to set properly, it doesn't set properly because it's oh, already good. frozen. Even if you um, heat it up and accelerate, put well, accelerants in it. Yeah, accelerants that just gives you the same same kind of, you know. I thought not about a good that. Job. You know, there is another option. I mean, you could tarp the work area, put space heaters, heat up materials, and all that stuff. Now, if you did all that, you can. You're adding to the cost, though. But it comes with a price tag, and I don't know too many people willing to pay it. Right. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I understand that. I just don't know if I could sit home. I'd go stir crazy in the wintertime. Yeah. I can't sit. I have what we call spilkus. Yeah. You know what spilkus is? No. Spilkus is another higher at word. We have schmutz. We got scuts. We got spilkus. Yeah. Spilkus means I can't sit still. Ants no. in your pants. Well, I do stuff, just not lay brick. Right. You know, like I do brain stuff. <laughs> no, but I have to get up in the morning and go. Like yeah. my at like 4.30 mm -hmm. in the morning, that's when I get up, the hamster wheel in my head starts spinning. Yeah. And 15 minutes in bed thinking about anything, that's it. The anxiety's off the charts. I got to go to the gym and burn it off before it even gets overblown. Yeah. So then I couldn't imagine what I would do with myself. I would get fat probably too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm already fat, but whatever. It is what it is. So, Noah, let's let's specifically talk about chimneys. Okay. okay. So the average home homeowner with a brick chimney, it sits out there in the elements, the yep. wind... The rain, the snow, yep. it takes a beating. It does. Does it work? Does it rot from the top down, basically? Usually. Okay. usually. So let's define what a chimney is usually built with for a homeowner. The very top, the cap. Okay. Is the that limestone? Is it concrete? What is it usually? It depends on the neighborhood, when the house was built, things like that. Um, for the most part, it's concrete. Okay. You know, I mean, there are a lot of limestone caps up there, um, but those would be more along the lines of newer homes. Oh, okay. Or somebody who's already had done work before. So a concrete cap is they build the brick up, and then they, they layer a layer of concrete. Concrete, And yeah. they, they make it kind of curvish. Well, that's, and I'm not quite sure why they didn't do it back then, but when they were building the houses, say, in the 60s and 70s, what you're talking about is a concrete crown. Um, and they didn't really put crowns on it back then. They would just build a concrete cap, and that was it, and off they went. Um, the problem with that is when the concrete cap is flat, all that snow and the rain and everything sits just right on top of it flat. Mm -hmm. And if water it freezes, have, it gets a little bit of a crevice, it expands, it pops it. Yeah, and, and then you get that little pop. And if water doesn't have anywhere to go, it's going to make its own path. Okay. That's why we have a Grand Canyon, according to Glen Hagee. There you go. Water always wins. Every time. Okay. So we're on the same page. I get it. Yep. So when a homeowner says, oh, I can see pieces of grout missing mm -hmm. or mortar mm -hmm. and i see that the pop pieces of the brick face pop off uh -huh. and it's like at the top two feet of the chimney okay do you really have to go farther than two feet i would suggest you go at least another uh they're called courses a row of brick is called a course okay so i'd suggest going at least another three courses below the actual damaged area um only because if the upper area is already damaged to the eye that you could see probably three rows below that or four rows below that aren't far behind and if you don't get that corrected and you just do what you see visually yeah. that's not done give it enough time the three below that are going to start to go right now you have new chimney up top and then in the middle you have this section of that's deteriorating and the only way to fix the deteriorating in the middle is to rip it all off again okay so so you go by the course yeah okay so I always used to, you know, when I was in the home improvement business, I did what we call the three-foot rule. Okay. If you're going to do a chimney, you're going to go three feet. Okay. And then, you know, for every foot, you want to go another foot down yeah. it, and build it back up. Not easy, but now, how's the chimney built? Is there clay pipes in the clay, middle? Clay fuse usually in the middle, and then it's just pretty much bricked around all the way top. Um, some of the newer homes or people have had it done now have uh, high efficiency flue liners. Um, yeah, like a B liner. Yeah. They s pull that through. Yeah. No, that's not something that we offer, but I do suggest that it's a good idea because it cuts protect. down. Well, it cuts down on the amount of heat that's released through your chimney um, because when the heat rises, especially in the wintertime, it causes condensation on brick walls of the chimney. Right. Um, and that condensation freezes and pop, pop, pop. And the flue liner um, cuts down on the amount of heat that expands in inside the actual chimney itself, which how, extends how, the life of the chimney. How expensive is it to do chimney work? It depends on the chimney. Every house is different. It so is. the homeowner, it depends. There's not like a nine hundred dollars a foot, fifteen hundred no. a foot, no. nothing no. like that. No, because I mean, it could be like a ranch. 
you know, and I could put like two tiers of scaffold and get it done in, in no time at all. Um, it could be, uh, you know, two and a half story house and with a walkout, and with slanted, a walkout, you got, slanted, you know, and I got scaffold, you know, off the ground. I got scaffold. And I need to build off the actual house itself. You know, are you uh, just... are you afraid of heights? No, <laughs> neither am I. No. I was just wondering because you'd be in the brick business. Can you imagine being a roofer and I don't and be, like I'm on the roof of it. I'm afraid of heights. Yeah, I mean, you can't work and hug the roof. No, no, no. <laughs> now, what happens when you go up on the chimney and you see the roof is bad too? Do you tell the homeowner? I'll let them know. You know, um, if I see something wrong. You know, some well, sometimes when we do chimneys because we don't do flashing. Um, it's not a service that we offer because we're not roofers. We're bricklayers. We're really good at what we do, and we just stay in our lane. You're good um, at that. It's kind of yeah. like wall side windows. Yeah. They're window company. They don't do siding. Yeah. You know, they don't do roofing. They don't do heating, cooling. Yeah. They just do windows. Yeah. And I assume the owner um, decided that he was just going to be the best at windows. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being extremely good at one thing, you know, um, no, I, I'm a I'm a fan of that that style. Yeah. Said, we're extremely good at giving home improvement content. We're you know I tell people what's hire it done. They say well what's what's hire done about right? And so I'll I'll give them an example. Well, listen, you've got Costco and you got Sam's Club. Yep. Pretty much close to the same, right? I would guess yeah. We're the Costco. We're not Sam's Club. There's two different models there, right? Yeah. Target or yeah. Target. There's Target. Kmart, right? <laughs> we're the Target. We're the upper scale. We we yeah. serve that group. And we're not ashamed to be in that field, and that's what we go for. Yeah. If you're the guy that wants to stop your, you know, washing machine from doing the tango across the floor, you can go to a do-it-yourself show. If you want to ask, get the questions to ask, then you go to my show. Yeah. That's how we roll. Makes sense. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, I want to ask you more about chimneys, porches, more home improvement stuff. Sounds good. I'm Adam Helfman. This is Hire It Done. <clears throat> Ninety-seven won the ticket. HireItDone.com. Welcome back, folks. This is Hire It Done. My name's Adam Helfman. You're listening to 97.1 The Ticket. We've got Noah Janai from Easy Home Improvement. Uh, the phone number to call him for a free estimate is 844-444-EASY, which is 444-3279, or easy-homeimprovement.com. Noah, um, how long have you been doing this? 17 years I've been doing this. Wow. Did you know 96% of all contractors fail within the first five years? It happens. Do um, you think there's any good contractors on Craigslist? No. That's what I thought. No. Yeah. I just was wondering because, you know, some people are like, oh, that's where I get all my contractors. That's great. I had a contractor tell me the other day, I uh, I go to Craigslist for finding laborers. And I'm like, yeah, how's that working out? He goes, well, we get nine or ten. We all, invite them all in. Three show up. Two don't pass. Yeah. One maybe. So it's like a ten to one thing. Yeah. And it's very difficult, obviously. But it is what it is. Yeah. So... Front porches, okay? You got concrete walkway up to the front porch. You got a concrete step, and then you got a brick face, three, four, five courses up maybe, yep. and you got a concrete cap, yep. right? Typical front porch in Metro Detroit. They fall apart over over the years. Yep. When someone calls you and they need your front porch repaired, and they, you know, you, you get the one homeowner just wants, oh, I just sent a couple bricks too thin. Yeah. Isn't that like a Band-Aid fix? Usually, I mean, I'll look at it. I mean, if I have a, you know, a fix that I think is going to last you a few years and it's, you know, Band-Aid-ish, but I can still make it look really good and mm -hmm. last you a while, I'll swing it for you. But if I'm looking at it and you just have your feet dug in and you want a Band-Aid and I'm looking at it and there's like, I can't even Band-Aid this, if I can't do it right, I just won't do it. I just won't take the job. I don't blame you. So what do you do? In a situation, you just say, "Listen, I'm sorry. This is not. I'm not going to put my my work on this because it's not the right way." Yeah, it's it's our reputation. It's worth a lot more to me than whatever you're willing to pay me to put a bandaid on it. Do you think homeowners are um not aware of the pricing on brick because yeah. it's a lot of labor? Yeah. Well, is the material expensive? Material is not that expensive. It's the skilled labor. A common right. brick. What does it cost? You pay it by buy it by five hundred per five hundred. It depends on. The job are they yeah. dollar a piece, three dollars a piece, five dollars a, a piece, probably. Okay, yeah, and you buy in big quantities, so you yeah. get a good discount, yeah, you know. Okay, but the, I would assume you know, bricklaying is not easy. I remember when I first started in the business and I was, you know, had I was building a house actually, yeah. and the brick guys were like, Yeah, I lay a thousand brick a day, yeah, they're gonna look really, really bad. Well, back then, though, <laughs> that was the standard, you yeah. know, but today, you, you know, 
on a on a new construction job. Remember, there's no one living there. When you have a house, yeah. and it's old like a porch, yeah. you got to remove what's there. Yep. You got to prep the area, yep. and then you got to reinstall. Yep. And so when you take apart a brick porch and it's got mortar all around it, yep. right? Can you reuse those brick, or you have to? How much labor is involved in knocking off the old mortar? It just depends. I mean, sometimes it's just more cost efficient to buy new. Um, because it costs the homeowner more in man hours to clean all the mortar off the brick than it would for me just to buy them new ones. And, and then can you match new and with old? A lot of times. I can't say every time. Um, well, nobody can say every time. Sure. But we do our best. I mean, we use about a dozen different brickyards. Um, and as far as I know, I'm the only company that will go to Swanton, Ohio to get your brick for you if I think it's there. Swan, Ohio? Swanton, Ohio. Swanton. Yep, it's about 20 minutes uh, west so, of Toledo. Swanton? Yep. Really? If, if, if they I have think, a good selection if, over there or something? Well, sometimes they have stuff we don't have over here, and if I think they have what you're looking for, I'll go over there and look for it for you. Um, but that's it. That's as far as I'm going to go. <laughs> no, I got you. I got you. I used to go when I remember when I was back in the day, Friendship Brick Supply. Yep, it's still here. They run like Schaefer or whatever. Yep. Yeah, I used to run over there. Yep. They had everything. Block brick, all kinds. Kraus brick. Remember Kraus brick? Yep. Are they around still or no? You got to go to the, uh, like buy reclaim ones, not like new or anything okay. like that. So what about when you have an old brick porch, okay. and you're fixing it, and then the mortar? The mortar doesn't match the old stuff. Never does. How close can you get? It depends on the house, where it's located, the vegetation around the brick that are there now. I mean, you got to keep in mind, some of these houses are 40, 50, 60, 100 years old. Um, no mason, not me, not anybody can whip up, you know, 40, 50, 100 years of worth of weather and dust and dirt and all that good stuff. So we'll do our best. Um, but for somebody to say they can give an exact match every time, um, I'd like to meet that person. Yeah, you can't. No. So when you tell a homeowner, listen, your house was built in the 60s, the 70s, the 50s. Yep. The, the mortar's that old. When I put brand new mortar on it, yep. because of the weather, because of the elements, it's never going to match. Not now, over true. time, it could fade to match. It'll get close over time. But what's yeah. over time? Two years? Three years? Five so, years? Okay. So do you make them sign a disclaimer, or do you just say to them verbally, it's, hey, it's, Mrs. Jones, just so we're on the same page? I tell them verbally, and it does say in a work order that they understand that, you know, colors may vary and may not be an exact match. Cool. It's in writing. So... Anybody decides to call me later and say, hey, the color. I'm like, well, remember, I told you verbally, it's on a work order. On a work order, it says, then remember, you specifically signed a special area just for that. Right. You know, so. Is there different kinds of mortar, like different mixes? More, I mean, there's like N-type and S-type. And I mean, you basically, Metro Detroit, the best type of mortar anybody would use would be a, a type N. Type N. Um, type N mortar. And that's because it's historical or type n um lime in it or something well or? type n because it's, it's durable it can handle the strength and it still has some flexibility for expansion and traction because of the weather um oh, so, it there you go. so it's works. better for michigan climate yes got it so folks there's a little tip type n yep. n like nancy yep. got it yep. or n like noah there you go so, well, that's cool. Are you still doing your little video stuff in your car? Once in a while, I've kind of fallen off. I've gotten really busy working. I do right. need to get back on putting the little videos. I had fun when we did that, you and I. Yeah. That was yeah. cool. Yeah. We're actually going to be doing a beta. We're filming our first episode um, next month. Okay. And we're doing a cars and coffee with contractors. All right. And it'll be me driving, interviewing one of the contractors Going to visit a job site. Okay, cool. Kind of like gonna the, be a YouTube web series. Yeah, like, like the, the SNL. Uh, Seinfeld. Flips, Seinfeld. Is yeah, Seinfeld does coffee and comedians. Oh, okay. So we're gonna do our own take on it with, with contractors. Well, there you go. So I'm gonna pick you up, and then we're gonna drive to the job site. And on the way to the job site, I'm gonna interview you in the truck. Cool. We're gonna go check the job site out, and then I leave you there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you gotta find your. You gotta Uber home. You gotta find your ride home. Okay, cool. No, that's all I'm saying. Have you ever been stiffed by a homeowner? Once. Ugh. Is that the worst feeling? Yes and no. Well, I mean, you know, listen. I, if I you, was I was glad to be rid of her. Okay. Well, the reason why I'm asking is because I've you know been through the part where homeowners are like, you know what, I think I overpaid, and I'm just not going to pay you the whole amount. And you're like, what? You know, they don't realize. They just think they can beat you. And yeah. They don't realize that you have kids, you have a mortgage payment, you got car payments, you got insurance, you got overhead. Yeah. You earn that profit, and for them to try and take it away from you, you know. 
it's just it bothers me, you know, and it creates a little More bit of anger. More times than not, most of the people we deal with are are good people. Ninety nine percent, and yeah. you always, those yeah. you forget about. It's the yeah. one guy, yeah. the one homeowner that sticks it to you, yeah. and they just decide that's the way they do business. Yeah. Well, my particular circumstance where the lady stiffed us, and it wasn't a whole lot of money, anyways. But you know, every time we were working on her house. Like the first time I met her, she seemed like a okay, regular, normal person. Yeah. And then we came to work at her house, and then we came to work at her house. She was drinking. I'm like, okay, she's having a drink, cool. And then we went back in to finish the job, and she was drunk. And then we went to collect the check, and she was drunk and belligerent. And like three, four drunks later, I was like, you know what? Just forget it. <laughs> I mean, it just it wasn't worth. It was such a small job that I didn't even care. Right. You know. What are you gonna do? You can't talk reason with somebody who's drunk. So, I no, just, I don't. You I, know. Just, I just talked, chalked it up. That's what happens. But that, that, but that's a situation that's a side problem. Yeah. The other problem is, is you get the guy that's out to beat you from the beginning. There are some people like that. Yeah. But. So you know, what we used to do. We learned after a while that you know, oh, like I give you an example. We had thirty four hundred dollars due on a final kitchen. Mm. Job was perfect. The job took four weeks longer than promised. Mm. The reason why is the homeowner picked granite from a supplier that we didn't normally use and then when they tagged it and we called for it the supplier had already sold it oh nice. so it took a couple extra weeks <laughs> no one's fault homeowner said to me at the end yeah i know i owe you the 3400 but we decided we're not going to pay you and why is that well my kids missed soccer practice because we had to go and stay at home for the granite to be delivered and we ate out five extra times because oh. our kitchen wasn't ready and we feel for the aggravation and this and that, and because we heard Ruth to the rescue or whatever it was, we shouldn't have to pay you. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to leave the job open that you still owe me the money. Don't pay me. However, I'm sending you certified mail with the bill and saying you have no warranty on any product, product in this house that we've done work on, yeah. including your kitchen cabinets and anything else involved until the project is paid for. Yeah. And also we're going to place a lien on your property. For the thirty four hundred, and then you pay me no problem. Yeah, See you later, alligator. Later we can do that though. Well, of course, yeah. they came running with the check. You know, oh, we have to have our warranty. We have to have this. You know, but yeah. how are people thinking like this today? I mean, once in a while we run across a person yeah. who wants to renegotiate the terms after the work is done. Um, yeah, and we just simply don't. It's I, I, it I'm happens. Really, I'm really cut and dry. No re renegotiating after work is finished. I, I get it. Noah Janai. Easy Home Improvement. I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me on. You're the best. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Folks, if you want to get a quote on chimney or brick porch or any brick repair or any brick job, give Noah a call, 844-444-EASY, or just go to HireItDone.com. We got you covered. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. More Home Improvement Talk. I'm Adam Helfman. You're listening to the Hire It Done Radio Network at 97.1 The Ticket. HireItDone.com. Welcome back, folks. This is Hire It Done. My name's Adam Helfman. Anyways, good luck finding a good contractor this year, right? The good ones are busy, but there's still hope and there's still time. But let me give you some insider tips on how to find them, okay? Clearly, I I'm, I'm always want you to go to uh, HireItDone.com, and that's where we go for our contractors. But, you know, listen, this is always good information so i want you to use this advice store it away you know pretend like we're sitting in a coffee shop together right now right let me create this little vision for you you're sitting next to me and we're talking about finding good contractors okay because everyone's racing to renovate their home right now you know there's a big demand for it and there's not a big supply of contractors and the good ones are busy right so here's the thing. First thing I want you to do is you got to be prepared to wait. That's right. Be prepared to wait, possibly a long time. Now, I tell my contractors, like my landscapers, we have great landscapers. We got Greg the landscaper, uh, who's awesome. We've got Fresh Cut, Jared, um, J Bomb, and uh, John Michaels. And they're busy and they do great work. But here's the thing they're like, Adam. We got to turn things off because we're so busy. I'm like, no, you still need to meet the homeowners. Good contractors should be coming out to your homeowners. Let me tell you why. Because they need to start the relationship. Remember, homeowners buy on a couple reasons. Not always price. Homeowners buy 
because they're sitting across from someone they feel like you can do business with. They feel like that gut feeling, oh, I like this guy. I trust this guy. That's how homeowners buy, okay? Even with roofing, although the roofing business has dipped a little this year, they just got notification that the prices are going up, right? So now what? You better get, if you're going to get a roof, you better get it now. Um, and that's the point. So be prepared to wait, but call the contractor, have him come out. And if he says, yeah, I can't start the job for three, four months, say, okay, no problem. We need to get the ball rolling anyways. So you got to understand that it doesn't happen in a week. Now, if there's a guy that comes on and says, I can start right away. Or he says, listen, if you're flexible on the start date, every once in a while, a smaller job or a medium sized job can fit in when Jobs that are bigger that are planned have a hiccup. I'll give you an example. Uh, we're building a room addition off the back, and the permit, we're going for permit, getting ready to start, and the, the city says, oh, you need a variance. What do you mean I need a variance? Well, the side yard setback is 22 feet. And you're, 22, you're 20 feet. You're within 20 feet. We need a two-foot variance. Oh, come on. Can't you just give us a, a, a little bit of a nudge? Nope. You got to go in front of the planning commission. Okay, let's apply to the planning commission. What happens? It's six weeks out. Now the contractor's pushing it back, and they got six weeks to fill. Now, I'll be honest with you, a good contractor would know that ahead of time and would have checked that out. So there are certain things that you got to worry. But now there's six weeks to fill. So the con if you're flexible, the contractor can say to you, hey, Mrs. Jones, we can get your bathroom fitted in the next couple weeks. We need you to start right away. You know, those are... Uh, um, those are important tips. Now, here's another one. Is the contractor going to be dedicated to you? A lot of contractors have a problem saying no. They love to say yes. Oh, yes, Mrs. Jones, I'll be the best job. Yes, I'll do that for you. Yes, I'll do this. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, 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 yes. Stop with the yeses, contractors. Learn to say no. In fact, it's okay to say no to homeowners. And homeowners, if you like the contractor that's sitting in front of you and you don't have 19 bids, it's okay to say yes. I'm giving homeowners to say yes permission today, okay? But here's the thing. There's, there's one thing worse than trying to find your first contractor. Having to find a second contractor after your first one bails on a half-finished job, right? So let's be smart. Make sure your contractor is going to be on the job every day. Make sure he communicates with you every day. And tell them, it's okay, Mr. Contractor, if no one shows up. It's not okay if you don't call me to tell me that. You better get your contractor's cell phone number, and you better tell him, I want a phone call every day. There's nothing wrong with that. Or if you set up what we call the job site rules. You know what job site rules are? Rules of, okay, where do you want me to store the lumber? When do we want us to start work, and when can we end work? Can we work weekends? When do you want to communicate? Those are the rules. A good contractor is going to set the job site rules for you. Understand that. Here's another one. Pay attention to specialties. Just because some pros advertise themselves as a general contractor doesn't mean they can tackle every kind of renovation job. Right? Don't call wallside windows for a roof. Well, they're not going to do it anyway. They're a window company. But here's the deal. Johnny... On the spot remodelers, you know, or whatever you want to call them. Fly by night contractors. We do it all. No job's too big, right? Well, guess what? When you hire a contractor and you're hiring him to do a bathroom and he's a general contractor, just ask him, hey, can I see some pictures of bathrooms similar to mine that you've done? Just because the guy can build a Taj Mahal doesn't mean he can do a bathroom remodel. It's a very, very important point. And there's the other thing. Your contractors are busy. You can ask them. I know you're busy. I want to hire you. I want to schedule the job. Okay, I'm going to wait three months. But since I'm waiting, I would like to go visit a job in progress. A contractor should say, yeah, no problem. What kind of job you want to see? That's the deal. Okay? That's important. So here's the other thing. Personal recommendations, when you check recommendations, you know, you, you I, we always say check references, check references, call the references. Nine out of ten homeowners don't call references. Did you know that? One of the pre-screening things we do at Hired Done is we call the references. 
we call two kinds of references, homeowners and businesses. So we call the business reference for the contractor and we say, do they pay their bills on time? Are they current? You know, that kind of issue. You know why? Because we want to know what their business practices are. But then we call homeowners. Hey, Mrs. Jones, it's Adam from Hire It Done. XYZ Contractors uh, is applying to be one of our uh, pre-screened contractors on the list. And they gave her your name as a reference. And so I'm assuming because they gave your name, you're really happy with the work. Well, of course. He's not going to give us a guy who's pissed, right? So what happens? We talk through the job. Hey, do you mind if I call you or talk to you about a few questions? Sure. What's that? Well, what kind of work did he do for you? Oh, he did your bathroom. Well, bathroom remodeling is a really good job. Were you happy with the overall project? Of course. I'm sure. Then here's where we get them. I'm sure, Mrs. Homeowner, there were. I'm sure there were problems. I'm sure there was a couple of headaches. Can we ask you how he solved the problems? Now, we didn't ask her to tell us if there were problems. We asked her how he solved problems with the assumption that there were. Now, there's going to be a time where the homeowner says, oh, there was nothing wrong. He did the job in five days like he said he did. In and out, bam, bam, bam. We were happy. Oh, I love it. But there's always that, oh, you know what? When he did the demo that night, water was dripping out of the out of the plumbing that he tried to cap, and it flooded our basement. Whoa, what happened? Oh, we called him. He was there the next day with dryers, blowers. He had it fixed. No problem. Now that, my friends, is the sign of a good contractor, one that is solution-minded. That's what we look for. That's what we want. So if you're going to find a contractor today, don't go to Craigslist. Good luck with those bozos, okay? Yeah, you're out there. There are good contractors that may advertise on Craigslist. I haven't met one, nor do I, didn't, nor do I want to meet one. Listen, there's more to doing good work, folks. There's being licensed. There's being insured. There's actually paying your bills. You've got payroll. You've got taxes. You've got overhead, rent, light, cell phone bills, insurance. Somebody has to pay all that. There's a whole component to running a business, to becoming a professional contractor. You need to understand that, folks. Just because a guy does a beautiful pergola or a gazebo, can miter corners like the best, doesn't mean he's a good contractor. There's all these components. That's why at Hired Done, it's not just for everyone. It's for contractors that pass our pre-screening, okay? That's the important part for you to understand. That's why when you go to HireItDone.com, you may have to wait a little, but hey, we put you in front of someone that passed the pre-screening. So what it does is it reduces your risk of getting burned. That's it. All I wanted Hire It Done is for you to have a hassle-free home improvement. Not too hard to ask for, right, my friends? But here, let me tell you this. Let me give you the uh, Hire It Done mission statement as we wrap things up. Hire It Done educates homeowners. We raise contractor professionalism, and we facilitate a hassle-free home improvement process. Hi, you like me now. Thanks for tuning in, folks. My name's Adam Helfman, and you're listening to the Hire It Done Radio Network on 97.1 The Ticket. <laughs>